All right, I got a lot of students that just don't understand right now. Actually, I won't say a lot. We'll just say a few. Okay, but we're gonna make it. We're gonna make sure you guys understand what to do. Right now, I want you guys. We're dealing with linear equations. What are we calculating? We're gonna calculate the rate of change or slope. Everybody see three b right here. Three b right there. Here's what I'd like you to do on your paper. If you don't have a paper, just put it in your journal. It's okay. Label this x1. Label this y1. I'm changing colors now. Label this x2. Label this y2. All right. Do you guys see this slope of a line formula right here? So everybody, this right here represents what's called the change in y. This represents what's called the change in x. We refer to that in the mathematical universe to try to help students understand as the rise over the run, to try to make it more simple. All right, so here we go. Whatever I do, you do. Don't watch me do the math. Do the math with me. All right, here we go. Parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses. Put M equals. Then let's label it. Y2 minus Y1. Where am I getting it? From the slope formula right here. X2 minus X1. Just write it down. See if you can keep up. All right? Don't be the student that has two speeds. Slow and stop. All right? Let's kind of keep up with me. What did the papa tomato say to the baby tomato when he was lagging behind? Hey, buddy. Catch up. But um bum All right, here we go. Does anybody know my Y2 value? What is it? Correct, so put a 1. What would my y1 value be? Correct, 5. What about my x2 value? Negative 3, good. My x1 value? 7. All right, all right. So what do we have? We have 1 minus 5. So you guys ready? Write down 1 minus 5. And 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Why is it negative 4? Because there's more negatives than there are positives. What does that say? Negative 3 minus 7. So I'm going to write negative 3 minus 7. Now, here's the reason why we put things in parentheses. If we put things in parentheses, if I have another negative here, let's say that was not a positive 7, that was a negative 7, then that would help me remember a negative times a negative is a positive. That's what we have used parentheses for. All right. So we have negative 3 minus 7, which is negative 10. Now, would you guys agree? A negative divided by a negative is a positive, but we have positive 4 over 10. But can this fraction be reduced? It totally can. What is our reduction? 2 over 5. Boom. That's our slope. 2 over 5. Now, here's what I'd like you guys to do. Okay. In Desmos, right now, participate. Be a part of the process here. 2 over 5. I want you to put a 7 and a 5 and a negative 3 and a 1 into what? Into Desmos. Here we go. So we hit the little table. And what was one of our ordered pairs? Oh, my goodness. Thank you. 7 and 5. And what? Negative 3 and 1. Now, check this out, guys. Do you see how when we do it in Desmos that the points just pop up right on the, the screen? All right. Now, what did we say our slope was? Two or five. Now, check this out. If we wanted to, if we go up two units and over one, two, three, four, five, and put another point right there, and if we go up two units and over one, two, three, four, do we hit the other do we hit that point? Yeah. So this is what it looks like. This is what this particular slope, what, looks like. What does that represent? The rise over the run. It goes up to and over 5. This is the rise. This is the run. It goes up to over 5. That kind of helps you understand what slope is. Now, there's something you need to have in your journal, and I'm going to write down the phrase that pays, so you better make sure you have it in your journal. If you're in Desmos and you want to know the slope or the y-intercept, does anybody remember what it is? What is it? Nope, not y equals. Not close. Not y squiggle. Y1. Then, then what? 
the squiggly line, which we call a tilde. M X M X one. All right, plus B. Now check this out. What did you guys just see happen right at the end when I typed in a B? What happened? It plotted it all the way through those two points. Now, Desmos will only help you if you know what you're looking for. Does everybody see this little decimal right here of point four? Do you guys know what point four, what fraction that is equal to? It is four over ten, but what do you say? What is four over ten reduced to? What? Two fifths. Didn't I tell you guys? What did I say our slope was? Two fifths. So what does Desmos do? It doesn't give you the fraction. It gives you the what? It gives you the, the decimal. Now, what is this little b? What does this point right here represent? The y. The y intercept. All right. So in review, guys, what does everybody need to know? Y1 tilde MX1 plus B. So I'm going to give you a chance right now to make sure you write it down in your journal. This is very, very, very important. It always gives you your slope and your Y intercept. So I'm giving you a chance to write that down in your journal. Okay? Now I don't want you to panic if you do not how to know how to change decimals to fractions. Here's the cool thing. You literally just type in a point four. And when you do, when I did, watch, if I put the four, what do you see pop up when I put that point? Anything anything? Sorry, do you see? Do you guys see it right there? Did you click it? It gives you the fraction. Are you going to be allowed to use this while you're taking your... Yes. That's why I'm showing you how to do it, okay? Now, in the graphing calculator, which you're also allowed to use, if you type in point 0.4, you actually go over to where it says the math. You guys see where it says math right there? You click on it, and you change it to a fraction. You just press enter and enter, and it changes it to your fraction. So it'll change any decimal to a fraction. The only thing you got to be worried about is if it's a repeating decimal, you got to keep going a long ways before it changes it to say one third. Okay? You can't just type in point three three and it be enough. That'll say thirty three over a hundred, which is not the same as one third. Close, but not the same. Alright? So ah, there we go. In review, did we do everything by hand and get the correct slope. Yeah, we got what? 2 over 5. Do you guys see this part right here? Could you type that in the calculator so you don't mess up any computation? Absolutely. So follow, follow with me in the graphing calculator. What I'd like you to do, turn on the graphing calculator. I'd like you to hit alpha y equals enter. So everybody turn on your calculators, type in alpha y equals enter. So you have this little fraction right here. And then we're going to do parentheses, 1, close parentheses, minus, open parentheses, 5, close parentheses. And you go down, open parentheses. What did we plug in? We plugged in what? Negative 3? Okay, so I'll type in a negative 3. Negative 3. We close it, and we hit minus. We open a parentheses. We type in a 7. Just like that. So so if if you guys use this right here, if you map it out, you just take the time and energy to plug in everything correctly and you plug it into your graphing calculator, look what happens. You see that? All right, so we're going to continue on right now. We're going to go back over here to our little worksheet right here. Does everybody say it says explain how the rate of change is related to slope? Can you guys just write rate of change? is slope. Whenever you, whenever it asks you for what's called the rate of change, that is the slope. They mean the exact same thing. So anytime you see a word problem that says, what is the rate of change? What are you looking for? Slope. That's all you're doing. All right? So just put, it's the same thing, man. I mean, well, don't put man. Just put, it's the same thing. All right. Everybody see this right here. We're going to go and do this together. All right. Oops, sorry. We're going to do this together, so check it out. Right now, we have three different sections. So I'm going to highlight these three different sections right here. One of them is going to be in blue. All right. One of them I'm going to put in red. 
and we'll do one in green. All right, and then we'll do one in orange. All right, there we go. There's orange, okay? So if you would follow along and see if you guys understand what is, by the way, what does M represent, everybody? Slope. So we're going to find the slope of each of these. Ready? So check this out. Would you guys agree that this goes up one end, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one? Every single time. So just put that on your paper. If you want to do a little shading, go ahead, do a little shading if you want to. Color it in. All right, up one end, over one. Now, if you don't have this worksheet, all right, if you don't have this worksheet, here's what I'd like you to do. What is this point right there? That's at negative 10 what? Negative 10, hold on, yep, negative 9, I like it, negative 10, negative 9. Now, what is this point right here? What would you guys say that is? Negative, negative 4, negative 3, all right? So check this out. If I go up 1 over 1 each time, that's going to be what slope? A 1 over a 1, so my slope is 1. Now, Look at this point, negative 10, negative 9, negative 4, negative 3. Watch what happens when I just type it in. Ready? Negative 10, negative 9, negative 4, and what was it? Negative 3. What does it tell us our slope is? 1. Now, what does the B value represent? That represents the y-intercept, but our slope is 1. Cool. All right. All right. Hopefully you guys are seeing a little pattern here. Hmm. Let's take a look at this one right here. What would you guys say this slope is? Yeah, it's zero. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. So if you're just kind of, if you don't have this sheet, that's okay. Watch this. What's this ordered pair? You can do this in Desmos. What's this ordered pair right there? Zero what? Negative 3. So watch what we're going to do. We're going to go over to Desmos. I'm going to take this one out and put a 3. And then put this one and put, what, 0. And what does it say your slope is? 0, right there. Just by, just by doing what? Typing in your ordered pairs. All right. Let's take a look at this one right here, guys. What is this ordered pair right here? 6 comma, what would you guys say? Yeah, 6 comma 9. Now, check this out. Here's another way of looking at it. As I'm scanning it, it looks like it hits right here, right there, right there, right there, right there. What's happening in this graph? How much is it going up and, yeah, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. It goes up 2 and over 1. You guys see that? It goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So what do you guys think my slope is? 2 over 1, and what's it equal to? 2. All right. So watch this. I'm going from what? 0, negative 3 to a 6, comma 9. So I'm going from 0, negative 3 to a, what am I going to do? Put a 6 and then a what? Right there. Boom. What does it say my slope is equal to? 2. All right, and last but not least, last but not least, oops, let's go back to her. What is this ordered pair right here? 10, 1. Put 10 and a 1. Now, as I'm scanning, does everybody see how it goes perfectly through that ordered pair right there, right here, right here? Now I have to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Yeah, so now it's going, what, down 2 and over 1. So what's my slope? Negative 2, because it's going down 2 units and over 1. Now, if I take this 10, 1 and do what with it? Just put it right there in Desmos. So I'm going to put a 10 and a 1. What does it tell us our slope is right there? Negative 2. So in review... How many ordered pairs do you guys need in order to find the slope? How many ordered pairs? Just two. Now, it won't tell you the slope if you don't have what? The phrase that 
pays. You need the phrase that pays in order for you to, to know the slope. So everybody, here's what we're going to do. We are simply going to go right over here. I'm going to type in the Khan Academy. I'm going to go to the Khan Academy. and I'm going I'm to do two problems with you. Make sure you know what I'm doing. And then I'll let you guys have a chance to do it on your own. So we're going to go to the Khan Academy. Right here, we're going to go slope from graph. So by the way, this is called slope from graph. So here's what I'd like you guys to do. In your journal, right now, in your journal, I need you guys to draw this graph in your journal. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to let you guys draw it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to draw the graph. Let me give you the ordered pairs that you need. All right, I want you guys to draw this graph. I want you to put a point right here at negative 3, comma 1. And I want you to put a point right here at 2, negative 3. And I want you to connect it. So I need you guys to make an x-axis, a y-axis, and draw that line using those two ordered pairs in your journal. So here we go. There's a couple of ways you can do this, okay? The, the important thing is, is you have to find points where the line passes through an ordered pair. Now, I want you to pay very close attention because we're going to go down a certain amount, okay? We're going down a certain amount. You know what? I'll go and use a, a nice, better drawing tool here, all right? Let's change it. There we go, okay? We have to go down a certain amount, and we have to go over a certain amount. Guys, what do we call this section right here? We call it the rise. And what do we call this se section? The run. This is the change in Y. This is the change in X. How much have I gone down? What would you guys say? How many units have I gone down? Yes, so I went down four units. Now, why did I put a negative? Because if I go down, I have to put a negative. If I go up, I have to put a positive. How many do I go over? One, two, three, four, five. So what is my slope of this line? Negative 4 over 5. That's what I'm literally going to type in to the Khan Academy. All right? Now, could you use Desmos to help you find it? Absolutely, you could use Desmos. Negative 3, comma 1, 2, comma, negative 3. Watch what we do here. Ready? We go back to Desmos real quick. One of them we said was what? Negative 3, comma 1, and what was the other one? 2 negative 3. Do you guys see the negative 0.8? Negative 0.8. What is that fraction? We should know it. What is it? It's the same thing that we got from doing it by hand. Now, which is faster? Just doing what? Going down and over. What do you have to have in order to use Desmos? You have to have the set of ordered pairs in order for that to work. Okay? So here we go. All I'm doing right now, I'm going to go over here. And what am I going to type in right there? Negative 4 over 5. Do you guys see how I typed it in? Negative 4 over 5. Boom. Last one we're doing. Then I'll let you guys do it on your own. It says, what is the slope of this line? Now, something, a tool that they have on the Khan Academy is this little pin tool. So I'll use it. Even though I don't have to, I'm going to go ahead and use it. I'm just going to choose red. So right here, does everybody see right here where that point is? I'm choosing that point. Why? Because it's where it crosses perfectly, right? Right there. Now I'm scanning, 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 scanning. Does it hit perfectly right here? Yes. Scanning, scanning, scanning. What about there? Yes. So in my mind, I'm going what? I'm going up a certain amount and over a certain amount. Now remember, slope is equal to what? The rise, the change in the y over the change in the x. Now, I'm going to give you the ordered pairs for your journal. For your journal, you're going to put a negative 4 and a negative 3. And then I want you to use a negative 1 and a negative 2. Negative 1 and a negative 2. So use those two points and then just make a little right triangle. By the way, you have to use right triangles, okay? All right. Now, I'm going to do it in, with my device, which is neater. So... Just a little bit, okay? I'll, I'll just use mine. Plus, I'll be able to, do, you guys be able to see it a little bit nicer and neater. Oh, make sure it's what type of triangle? Yeah. 
because you want to get the right answer. All right, so what'd you get? You're right, up one over three. Now, how do I know it's going to be a positive slope? Because we look at it, it's going what? It's going up from left to right. Now, this is where students are going to make a mistake. Okay, I'll tell you. What, I'll tell you why they're going to make a mistake. Yes, you cannot type in a repeating decimal. You can't type in point three 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 three. So if you use Desmos, watch. If you use Desmos, and I go back over here and I use what? Negative four, negative three. Negative one, negative two. Does everybody see this point three 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 repeating? You can't type that into the Khan Academy because that's continuous. And so you have to do what? You have to do a whole bunch of threes, and then you can do what? You can change it to your fraction of one over three. So if I was right now to type in this, sorry. If I was to type in this, you know what it would do? It would count it wrong. Okay? So what do you have to do? You're not going to do 0 0.33333. What do you have to do? 1 divided by 3. So if it's positive, use a positive slope. Now, if you mess up, hey, if you mess up, this is great. Check this out. See step-by-step -step solution. Does everybody see? They do what? They show you the what? The rise over the run. There's the rise. Now, what's the only thing that's different from what they do? That what I like to go what? Up and then... Over. I like to do the rise before I do the run, but it means the same thing, okay? Please, just do your best. Right now, you have one thing to do today. I want you to do the, the, the assignment, slope from graph. Good luck.